How Abraham Lincoln rose from poverty to become the U.S. President. Born on Wednesday, 12th of February, 1809, Abraham Lincoln was a man who grew successful where others failed, who led bravely where others shook in their boots. He was known as the Rail Splitter, who rose from poor humble origins to walk the corridors of power in the White House. In today's video, we'll be looking at the life of Abraham Lincoln to use his life story to inspire young people who may be discouraged about life. We hope this video gives you the courage you need to believe in yourself and pursue your biggest dreams. If you're new here, consider subscribing so that you won't miss other interesting videos like this. Early Years of Frontier Life Once Lincoln turned seven, he was deemed old enough to help his father Thomas Lincoln clear the farm and raise livestock. In those frontier lands of Kentucky, nobody prayed for an easy life, only the strength to endure. And endure Lincoln did, day after day. Soon, even he grew to dislike the physical labor of farming and hunting. But it could not be helped since the needs of the family came first. His only consolation was returning home to rest his head on the warm laps of his mother, Nancy Hanks, while his elder sister, Sarah, fussed over him. That same year, in 1816, things went from bad to worse. Lincoln learned his father had lost his farming land to legal disputes. Disputes Lincoln's father could not afford, for was a simple farmer and a Lincoln who had been less prosperous than his predecessors. Milk Sickness The only option left was moving up north to Indiana, where land disputes were far and few and no slaves to stain the Lincoln's family religious beliefs. As Thomas juggled farming, cabinet making and other odd jobs to keep the family well fed as they squatted on public land, Lincoln himself did whatever he could to help tend the farm and livestock. Lincoln was nine when his mother passed. The epidemic of milk sickness had claimed her life. Though his 11-year-old sister Sarah took charge of the house, Lincoln had to spend winter for once without the special warmth of his mother's love. No matter how warm the fire had been through those nights, they could not thaw the bitterness within his heart. A new mother. It took a year until Lincoln's father remarried. A widow with three children and a namesake of Lincoln's older sister, Sarah Bush Johnston. Sarah treated Lincoln and his sisters as one of her own, so much that Lincoln believed that God had sent an angel to take care of them. Eventually, Thomas overcame their shaky financial situation enough that he bought the very land that they squatted on. Education During this period, what education Lincoln received lasted less than a year. It was his first taste of literacy. In those months of learning, little by little, Lincoln lost himself in books. He learned mostly by himself and from others too. What he lacked in quantity of books, he made for in quality in all forms. The King James Bible, Aesop's Fables, John Bunyan's The Pilgrim's Progress, Daniel Defoe's Robinson Crusoe, Mason Locke Swims, The Life of Washington, and the autobiography of Benjamin Franklin, among others. While his father became annoyed with Lincoln for not putting his back into work, Lincoln's stepmother defended him and supported his self-education wholeheartedly. Second Migration In 1831, the fear of further milk sickness incidents forced the Lincoln family to migrate westward to Illinois. Now 22 years old, Lincoln stood head and shoulders above most men. If he wasn't helping his father in his new farm, Lincoln will be performing several jobs. Amongst them, a rail splitter, splitting log to build fences, and a flat boatman paddling between the Mississippi River and New Orleans. Until one day, Lincoln pondered to himself, is this how the rest of his life was going to be? Juggling jobs like his father had done? A major decision. Thus, upon his return to Illinois, Lincoln decided on settling in the village of New Salem, a chance to put some distance between himself and his father. Lincoln cast aside his axe for pen and paper. He worked as a storekeeper, a postmaster, and a surveyor. But these jobs were only his first step crossing from the farm life into a whole new bustling world. 
attempting a new life. In 1832, Lincoln's first attempt at a new life for himself failed when his general store in New Salem fizzled out despite a growing economy. Lincoln did not start any other business thereafter. Instead, he decided to enter politics, more precisely, the Illinois General Assembly. With a powerful voice and careful words, Lincoln's campaign commanded the attention of most people. But that attention did not be a fruit in the elections. He lost woefully. How could he have been so naive to think he'd win with no wealth to his name or friends in high places who could vouch for him? All he had was his grit and wit. To people, he could talk the talk. But could he walk the walk? If that was so, then all he needed to do was to learn to walk the walk. So Lincoln went back reading as much as he could. If he was entering the legislation, knowledge of the laws would help. He decided on becoming a lawyer and taught himself law by reading several law books in the Illinois legislation. Eventually, Lincoln's effort paid off. In 1834, Lincoln succeeded in his second campaign under the Whig Party and served in the Illinois House of Representatives for four terms. In 1836, Lincoln's admittance into Illinois' law bar was confirmed, which allowed him to begin practicing law. Romantic Relationships In the village of New Salem lived a woman named Anne Rutledge. As of 1835, Anne and Lincoln engaged in a relationship but were not engaged yet. Fate, as it appears, would not let Lincoln obtain happiness. Within that same year, Anne died from the outbreak of typhoid fever that hit New Salem. Her death hit Lincoln so hard, not even his friends nor his books helped him escape the reality his first love had left him. Buried before the sowed seeds of their relationship could grow. Later in the following year, he met his second love interest by the name of Mary Owens. But things were not meant to be. The third time had to be the charm for Lincoln because in 1840, he became engaged to one Mary Tudd, but would end up married in 1842 in Springfield, Illinois. The fact that Mary was the young daughter of an upper-class family from Kentucky with a wit to match did not deter Lincoln, nor did it deter Mary from accepting courtship from a man who qualified as barely middle class and beneath her, President of the United States. Lincoln, now the face of the Republican Party, meant they stood united against the expansion of slavery. Such news roused the fears of the southern states who threatened to secede from the Union should Lincoln win the presidential race. This did not deter Lincoln, who emerged president of the U.S. and the first Republican president in 1860. Assassination Five years and a civil war later, in 1865, Lincoln and his wife found themselves settling into an era of peace as they attended a play at Ford Theater until a gunshot echoed from the balcony. Mary screamed as her husband's body toppled over. Smoke wafted from the barrel of a small gun held by one John Wilkes Booth, an actor and a confederate sympathizer. Though Booth escaped on horseback, no amount of speed could save Lincoln from a headshot. And so, the President of the United States died the next morning on April 15, 1865. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We'd like to give you another interesting video for you to enjoy next. But before then, our team will be very happy if you can like this video and share it with your friends on social media. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss other interesting videos like this. Look at your screen now to see two other interesting videos we handpicked for you to enjoy next. We love you.